Welcome to the Grace Point Publishing Podcast. Come along with us as we get an exclusive look into what really happens as we co-collaborate with our authors to craft and publish their books. Please see the show notes to find more ways to connect with our creators. And now, here's your host, co-founder and publisher of Grace Point Publishing, Michelle Van De Pass. I am thrilled to be here with friends and wonderful authors, Vince and Mary Kramer. I am Michelle Van De Pass with Grace Point Publishing, and they recently published their book. I wish you could see the cover. It is gorgeous. I'm holding it here, but we're audio only. Awakening Through Moments of Choice, a memoir of divine guidance. And one of the things I love about this book is the two of them have come together to share their story. It's an incredible love story, a transformational story. Welcome to the show, Vince and Mary. Thank you, Michelle. And it's so exciting to be here. Yes, we love being here with you, Michelle. One of the things when going through and really looking through the book and pulling out questions, how long ago is it now that you guys met? I was looking for that. How many years ago did you meet? We believe we met first in 1997. And then what started this whole incredible divine journey is we were reintroduced by the same friend in 2007. Wow. Did you remember meeting? Like for those years where you're like, oh, this is the guy, Mary. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I kind of know the answer, but. Oh. Well, actually, it was the other way around. It, it was actually me. And it's documented in the book that I had this strange energetic connection to Mary the first time that we met. I actually decided I have to stay away from this woman because I don't understand the connection. And I was in a very happy marriage. I wasn't looking for a relationship. I wasn't even looking for a friendship in that way. But that connection was so strange for me that I just purposely stayed away for 10 years. Wow. And in that first meeting, was that the channeling spiritual one or the second meeting? Remind me and explain to our audience about how you met. One was like a conference, right? Or a channeling, a workshop. So part of the story is that part of Vince's awakening was in 2008 when we started dating. I actually had sort of a vision or channeling for him. And that's a really cool story that's in the book. And I'm not going to spoil it. That's when I saw the little blonde girl in a vision. I shared it with Vince and Literally, hours later, he had to drive all the way to Denver from Aspen and get on an airplane to this conference you're referring to. And he had an experience, several of them that are detailed in the book, about other people seeing the same exact little blonde girl sitting with him. But that's not what started Vince Channeling. But we do believe that was probably his awakening. Like, yeah. And you were a pilot at the time. Yes. Matter of fact, I just retired just two years ago. I flew airplanes for another, oh, geez, another 14 years after this intensive. One of the things that I find fascinating is your internal process, Vince, of reconciling the place where you were, let's say, in 1997, I would say traditional USA family pilot. And here we are all these years later, we're recording this in 2023. You basically full out channeler, spiritually awakened, conscious couple. Like the transformation there is like lifetimes of transformation in a decade really is what happened, right? Yes. And it happened so quickly that it affected me physically too. My body went through a transformation also with the change and awakening. But I really didn't have a choice. I had some really big wake-up calls, Michelle. And I got to a place where I had to find what was missing in my life. It was me. And in finding that, I was willing to do whatever with Mary's support and sometimes Mary pointing out to me some things that I just seem to be confused about in life. I was able to really grasp 
some of the concepts that were put out in front of me, and they were put out in a way that I couldn't ignore them. Vince, talk to me about the very first time you channeled and what you thought that was. Were you clear what it was? Well, definitely clear, because one of the steps on my journey was Mary telling me that she learned about this little blonde girl during the channeling. I was at a point in my life, Michelle, that I said, anything that comes out in front of me, I'm going to try it. And if it works for me, I'll hold on to it. If it doesn't, I'll let it go. So Mary took me to a channeling shortly after this event where all this little blonde girl showed up for all these other people. Vince, do you know she's there? But then what happened at that channeling was, you're here, Vince, to open hearts. You're here to help people raise their vibration, but you're going to have to do it yourself. And we're going to help you do it. So we're going to come and we're going to share information with you. We're going to give you downloads at night. And when you hear this voice in your head, we want you to close your eyes, look up. If you see this color, it's this angel. If you see this color, it's that angel. And what happened was, Michelle, this information started coming in every single night. As an airline pilot, you can't be awake two, three hours every night getting downloads. So Mary, over time, kept trying to get me to let that information come through me in a way that during the daytime, she could take notes on it, get it, and then I wouldn't be awake at night. So my first channeling was agreeing to, okay, I'll try to allow this information to come through. So one, so I get some sleep at night, but two, that the information is being documented right away because as soon as I would come out of this nighttime download, I would forget a lot of information because my vibration would change. So Mary's the one that talked me into trying the channeling. And as far as I was concerned, it worked, but I wasn't going to do it for anybody but Mary. Interesting. Mary, is that how you remember it? Yes, I do remember it. (laughs) This does not sound like it was a surprise to you. It's almost like you knew this was coming. You know, I have to agree with you, Michelle. I could tell stories of where I kind of had glimpses that our life was laying out in front of me. And I could see Vince, and it hasn't shown up exactly the way the vision was back in 2008. But to answer your question, yes, I did have knowings of what our future was going to look like. And do you also channel Mary? Not like Vince does. And I believe that not everyone is supposed to channel the way Vince does. But yes, I channel as in I can connect in, I can get answers, I have promptings, I have knowings. That's a great answer because I think we all have access to that for ourselves. I do too. Yeah. So Vince, there's different ways to channel one of which is you just clearly hear a voice and other ways you get visions. Do you get the information in different ways or is it very consistent only one way? Well, I can get the information in different ways. As a matter of fact, that's part of what we do in Imagine Miracles is teach people how to get their information in a very clear way. But when I'm channeling for a group or for an individual just to bring the higher frequencies of their energy stream down. I put myself in kind of a a self-hypnotic place, and then I just clear channel to let the information come through. I do hear the words in my head before they come out of my mouth, but it's almost instantaneous. When I go into that state, what I see, the group that I channel is called the round table. And they call themselves that because of being equals, just like King Arthur's court. So what I do see in my mind is I actually see a circle of colors. And the colors are representative of the frequencies that are coming in. Has that changed over the years? Has the frequency changed over the years? Oh, by far. I can channel at a much higher frequency now than I was at the beginning. Do you think that's you or do you think that's the energy on the planet that's changed? Both. My body can handle the energy more. So when I first started channeling, that first channeling for Mary, I probably coughed and hacked for like 10 minutes because my throat couldn't handle the energy that was coming through. 
but my body got better at it and I brought my frequency up. So I was able to bring higher vibrations through. But also, like you said, the vibration of the planet, the frequency of the planet is increasing. We're moving towards what Kieran shares 2027 when we move into that new paradigm of, of we consciousness. And I think the energies on earth coming through me, the energies of earth support those energies. Mm, nice. So for those of you who don't know, Vince mentioned Karen Curry Parker, who wrote the foreword to your book and has written many books around human design and changes coming from that perspective in 2027. Mary, I want to come back to you for a minute because I think you were, as they say, conscious or more conscious. I don't like to put labels around these things because we're all we're all here. But if you were to look back 20 years ago, you were just in a different place in your journey. And you were able to help shepherd Vince. And it reads like sometimes pull and push and cajole and cheer to lane Vince to get to where he is today. Was that frustrating for you? That was not frustrating. That was probably the most exciting time of my life was the pushing and pulling of Vince. And I'm so thankful for my mother. She's the one that, let's say, kept me conscious enough to attract Vince in and be the shepherd for him. And now, interestingly, he's the shepherd for me. So now I am being pushed, pulled, cajoled. And what was the other word you used? Cheerleading. Really? Well, mostly. Um, <laughs> just kidding. To really expand more. I understood through his journey and I understood through writing the book with him, even though he has the majority of the voice in the book. And then I did a companion podcast to the book. And that's when I realized, wow, I had really stalled out and have been living a very stuck life, even though I had all of this consciousness. I love that word that you used, awareness. I was awake enough then and now I'm truly being challenged to wake up more, to open my heart more, to raise my vibration more. Can I share on that? One of the most important things about the title of the book is it says awakening, not awaken. And I think it's important because awakening is a process. We continue to wake up to more and more and more of who we are. It's really not a, a destination. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. The title of the book also is Through Moments of Choice, which implies that you're making choices. We all make choices every moment, but were there like specific times in your life that you felt like you really had to make a divine choice to move to the next step? Several, for sure. In moments of choice, we all have these wake-up calls and then we were given free will. And in that free will, we have this choice. And we get choices in the promptings that show up day to day. We get choices in the reflections that we get from other people. But the big ones for me, first of all, was understanding after my divorce that I had to find what was missing. That was my first choice. Do I continue just being who I am in that moment or do I look for that person that seemed to be missing in me? So that was the first moment of choice. The next was when that little blonde girl was pointed out to me at that illumination intensive. That was a moment of choice I really couldn't deny. After Mary told me about this little blonde girl and then five people described her exactly the same way. It was like, okay, I either shut down completely or I follow this prompting that I was getting there. And then the other one was that channeling that I talked about. There's a really interesting story in the book about it, but basically there was something that happened in my life that nobody knew about but me and two other people. And the guides during that channeling pointed it out and it was like, okay, Vince, you better pay attention here because this is as real as it gets. And for me, I didn't believe in that. I thought, you know, I'm going to a fortune teller or a crystal ball reader or whatever. And now this energy 
points out something that happened in my life that no one else knew. And that was truly a moment of choice. Okay, step into fully who you are. Mm, That's a beautiful way to put it. It's interesting, this word believe, whether we believe in something or not, does it make it real? And what if someone else doesn't believe in it? Is it still real? I mean, we could go down a rabbit hole there, but was there a point where you sort of went, okay, I'm just going to choose to believe? You know, the interesting thing is, from my perspective now, I could say yes. But at the time, Michelle, I would tell you that I didn't think I had a choice. It was put out to me in front of me so strongly that I knew I had to follow what was showing up in front of me. But also, I was feeling so good and feeling better and better and finding myself and being stronger in myself. And it was like, this is the right direction. This is the path. But I agree with you. We all have our truths. And sometimes we have to choose. Is our truth one that's empowering us or is that truth disempowering us? That's a great way to put it. We're all surrounded by people who believe something different than we believe. And truth is truth. And yet, we can have different truths. I find that fascinating where my truth might be totally different than my neighbor's truth. And we're both like so sure it's truth, right? And so at some point, belief plays into that. I think we'll have to do a whole nother podcast on that maybe. (laughs) Mary, I love this cover. And I know we went back and forth a while on this cover and it's got the two of you or representation of the two of you walking up this beautiful staircase to the stars and the light. What is it that you have in this book, Mary, that you're hoping other people will learn or be inspired by? What are you hoping other people will get from this book? Well, you use the word hope. I hope this book gives people hope. I hope this book shows them a path that's possible. Intentionally, it was written so that there was help actually in the book. So if someone wanted to read a little bit deeper than just reading about a love story, but actually reading the moments of reflection that Vince put in there and doing a little self-journaling, that it would start them or encourage them or expand for them what they want to know, meaning their essence wants them to know or what they already know and expand on that. When you said love story, I really want the people listening to know that it truly is a love story of two people coming together to help each other on their journey. But more importantly, it's an individual love story about learning to love yourself, about understanding just how amazing you are and how the universe is constantly delivering opportunities for us to be who we are. Mm, That's beautiful. Talk to me a little more about the round table and how people can connect with you if they want to be part of this experience that you offer. Well, the round table is probably the second love of my life after Vince. <laughs> I'm very close with them and they are a very amazing group of energies. And one of the things that they love to remind everyone is that they are simply the highest vibration of each one of us. I love that. Isn't that beautiful? They're not separate from us. They are just the highest vibration. And when the ascended masters sit at the table, they have walked in our shoes. Archangel Metatron is typically the spokesperson of the round table. Also, always at the round table, as well as the ascended masters, is Archangel Sandalphon. Both of those have walked the earth. They understand the duality, the mind. They always talk about, please, Mary, would you master your mind? And I think that's one of the reasons Vince and I are in partnership is because my mind, the thoughts in my mind, the subconscious is what I'm referring to, really drives my life more than Vince. And With the help of Vince and the Roundtable, they really are helping me see that and actually giving me tools that we share through Imagine Miracles. So that's about them. They're amazing. They're loving. They're 
high vibrational. One last thing before I share how you can be with them. When someone in a group or one-on-one comes to speak with the round table, your highest vibration connected to you, your non-physical self is also at the table. So a very unique attribute to Vince's ability to channel is not only does he bring the ascended masters and the archangels, but he brings your higher self to the table. And there are times when it's appropriate that your higher self will speak to you as well. We lovingly share the round table once a month, the third Monday of every month on Zoom for anyone to come and listen. They usually share a teaching for 10 to 20 minutes, and then they open it up for questions and answers. And then they have a summary at the end. And often the questions that are asked every month are very similar. And I think for those of you that may be bored with hearing the same questions every month, it's indicative of where we are as a collective. So I encourage that for any channel you go to, if you're asking the same question over and over, it's just, can you expand your energy to ask, let's say next time, a little bit more higher vibrational understanding of your question, or when you're listening to someone ask a similar question month after month, what can you do to raise your vibration to hear it differently? The awesome thing is through our work with Grace Point and you, Michelle, we were able to put QR codes in the book for those of that buy the book. They can just hit that QR code, sign up for one of those free months. Right. I was going to mention that. Absolutely. Do you find, because we talked a little bit about how the energy shifted and you're able to hold a higher vibration and the energy shifted on the planet, higher vibration. Is there any vibration or energy or wisdom that's coming through for 2023? This is a year of those who are being called to be the leading edge of this paradigm change that's coming to step more fully into who they are. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, I will guarantee you you're part of that leading edge. It's time for you to look at how can you show up bigger and better? How can you make more of an impact? How can you understand the real reason you're here on earth? Because when you start living that reason fully, other people are going to be able to live theirs. I want to jump in and say that if the roundtable were to have a word for the year, it would be empowerment. Oh, I'd love that. Because Empower Press is who published the book. (laughs) There you go. There we go. The book is Awakening Through Moments of Choice a memoir of divine guidance. I love it. Vince and Mary Kramer. And it's available everywhere. Books are available. Most of you probably go to Amazon, but it is available everywhere. And love for you to leave a review after you read this inspiring book. I'm going to ask you both for last words of wisdom for our audience. Mary, we'll start with you. Oh, follow your heart. Listen for promptings, look for messages, increase your awareness for those two things as much as you possibly can every single day. For me, each and every one of us is special. We're unique. There's no one else in this world of 8 billion people that are just like us. And it takes each one of us to fully live who we are, to put this puzzle of peace, a puzzle of life, together. I want you to know that we need you and the world needs you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Michelle. It was absolutely an honor and an honor to have you as our publisher. Yes. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming along with us today on the Grace Point Publishing Podcast. Join us next time as we introduce you to another one of our incredible authors. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform. To find out more about our authors and to see how we can help you publish your book, head to gracepointpublishing.com. Keep writing. Keep creating. Your words matter.